Kamala Harris used child actors in a video to promote going to space. Now, who cares, really? But, except, it's sort of, how much propaganda do you need? And does this point to why movements like the whole Let's Go Brandon thing take off? Because you just want some authenticity and a bit less sterile propaganda bombarding you. What does it mean when politicians and media conspire to create content like this? Why do they do it and should they stop? A video meant to sell children on the wonders of space exploration featured US Vice President Kamala Harris alongside a quintet of child actors who auditioned for their roles, it has been revealed. Now, look, in a way, I'm a person that's worked in media. I suppose you would. You'd get kids that can confidently talk. You don't want kids that are going to clam up and not speak and are shy and all that. But the problem is, is these things are presented as organic. What we're continually offered is an artificial version of reality in place of an authentic experience of reality, both in the way that we operate on our phones, our relationship with tech. Furthermore, the whole project of making space exploration appealing to kids underwrites the myth of progress. The idea of things are getting better and better. We're going to space now. You too will be able to get a ticket to space as long as you're extraordinarily rich. You know, like... The, the whole thing is propping up a system that's based on deception. I'm not saying that there aren't great advances in medicine and technology and even the fact that we can communicate like this is as akin to a miracle. But the idea that this... It has to be pursued at all costs, no matter what it does to the lives of ordinary people all over the world. That's a myth. It's a choice at very least. And this kind of propaganda has to be created so that people don't think, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this crap, man. I want some authenticity. I want to eat real food. I want to be a real human being connected to nature. I don't want to move through life. Well, at least we might go to space one day, baby. Well, welcome, you guys. Thank you so much. Welcome. Ready to start? Okay, go. So, I may not always be fast to take my parents' advice, but what is the best advice your parents have given you that perhaps you can share with us today? Oh, thank you for that question. I remember enjoying that question in rehearsals. You know, one of the most important pieces of advice that I can offer you guys, and I want you to really remember this, never let anybody tell you who you are. You don't have to tell these kids, they're all brilliant actors. They could be anybody. These kids are professional actors. They can tell you how to seem more natural when you're doing a apparently offhand chat with a bunch of kids. You tell them who you are and who you know you are and what you intend to be. Got that? Yes. yes. All right. They're looking nervously off camera. Got that? Yes. yes. All right. Someone's like, is this good? Are we... Do you want to go again on that? Kamala, that did not seem natural. Never let anybody suggest to you that you are what they think you should be. Bit more information. All five of these kids are actors. Carlo Bernardino, whose 13 year old son Trevor was one of the youngsters taking part, told the Washington Examiner he's a child actor. Plain and simple. He's been doing this type of thing for a while. Okay, we need Joe Biden to do a video on why it's really good to have a strong pharmaceutical industry. Hey, Mr. Biden, sir, is it possible that I could get some more tablets for my athlete's foot? Well, it is actually, son. Let's go, Brandon! Quiet! Who said that? Trevor Bernardino told KSBW that he was asked to submit a monologue about a topic he's passionate about, as well as three questions he wanted to ask a world leader. The next step was a virtual interview with the producer of the video. According to the examiner, the video featured Harris, Trevor and co-stars at the US Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C., where the VP is located. During the same time... <laughs> During the same time, the Taliban was in the midst of its final offensive in Afghanistan and thousands of illegal immigrants were being apprehended at the US-Mexico border. So, look, wherever you stand on the war in Afghanistan or on immigration issues, the fact that this ludicrous construction was being worked on during that tells you a lot. It's an interesting moment to take the pulse of the United States of America which many people would argue, and I'd be sympathetic to this argument, the greatest country in the world, greatest cultural machine, glorious democracy, incredible things. Like, But in this moment, while Kamala Harris was chatting to these well-cast youngsters, there was real shit going down. And instead of dealing with it, you're presented with propaganda. That's what this is, propaganda to underwrite the basic flow of life the basic flow of politics and resources. Don't disrupt it too much. Uh, people are saying, 
Look, lots of kids from different backgrounds and never getting opportunities. Okay, we'll get lots of kids to make sure they're all different colours and everything so as we can have Kamala Harris be sort of coquettish and cute with some kid actors instead of actually recognising that poverty is what is defining the lives and lack of opportunities for these children primarily and in order to address the cultural and civil problems around race, sexuality, prejudice and bigotry, these economic problems must first be addressed but that will, of course, mean real change that you can't paper over with a little video. I got more advice, you just let me know. <laughs> The official video as of Monday night had approximately 2,000 likes on YouTube and 5,100 dislikes. Comments have been disabled. That ain't that the world in microcosm. If things ain't popular, shut down people's ability to comment on it. Control it, censor it, fill the screen with lies and deception. Look, I recognise the person that works in show business. There are practical considerations, but this is not entertainment, the industry that I have come from. This is politics, which is meant to be about dealing with power and assuring that power gets to the places it needs to get to make the majority of people's lives as good as possible. We know that's a total bluff, blag, lie that what politics really does is ensures the interest of the powerful cannot be resisted by ordinary people. That's the function of government. To dress that up and disguise it with these adorable children and Kamala Harris is propagandist at best. So what is the most surprising thing you found about being vice president? There have been a lot of things because I've never been vice president before. So there are... Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to kids, don't they say the darndest things? Look, this whole exercise like in its synthesis, in its saccharine sweetness, in its banality, is a window into the kind of fluffy deception that we're continually bombarded with, pummeled with, in order that elsewhere incompetence and lasciviousness and venality can succeed. So while this is ultimately an innocuous pap story about promoting you know the space industry and let's face it, it is an industry now it's revealing because you can see the lengths that people go to and the means that they use in order to make public figures seem normal appealing affable easy to talk to when for what for why why not just get on with the bloody job of creating a better, fairer America, opposing corrupt power where it exists, affording opportunities for change to people that need it and deserve it. Oh no, that's hard, and that would affect the interests of the powerful. What we should do instead is cast some lovely looking kids, coach Kamala Harris to the best of our ability to try and seem normal for 15 minutes on a bloody balcony. There are, are many new things, but I'll tell you one of the things that I'm really excited about and one of the reasons for our visit and the time we're going to spend time together today. I'll tell you why we're meeting, because this is an unpopular government, because we've pledged a lot of things that we're unable to deliver, because after all the vitriol directed at Donald Trump, this ain't a hell of a lot better. And lives of ordinary people is not going to improve. And when they notice that, they're going to be disappointed that we've not done anything to stand up to big tech or big pharma. We're not going to do anything at all to wage war against inequality. So what we've done is we set some nice kids around in a circle, taught me how to make eye contact and seem a little bit normal. And that hopefully will take some of the pressure off this government so we don't ever have to actually do anything like represent ordinary people and the needs of ordinary people. <laughs> Why are these kids all crying? <laughs> are those actors tears? These kids are good. I really believe they're crying. I am crying. I had dreams. My mom was a scientist, so she would take us to the lab with her like on the weekends and after school because she had to work long hours. Look, there is a version of Kamala Harris, a woman of colour, risen through the ranks to become vice president. That's an impressive and powerful story. And it would be more impressive and powerful if it meant more opportunities for other people that are excluded from power. And perhaps more importantly still, a distribution of power so that more and more people have access to opportunity. And by opportunity, I mean a life that you want to live a life that you're happy to live. Instead of which, there is the participation. Like when she was a little girl growing up with a mum that's a scientist and that, did she think, oh, hopefully one day I'll appear in some piece of lavender propaganda to keep people dumb while the world falls apart? Fingers crossed. Well, you know, if those are the dreams, these are not dreams that should be fulfilled. We should have shared dreams together 
more important than dreams, a vision and a means to get there. And they should be based on values and principles that afford most people the opportunity to live dignified, loving lives, accepting that we're all different from one another, we've all got different needs, but ultimately at our heart, we have a cohesive and collective aim and goal. I don't know all the answers to these questions, but I do know that the answer isn't, well, get a bunch of kids to sit around and ask lob me softball questions so that I can seem like a nice person and never do anything of any meaning. And I just love the idea of exploring the unknown. And then there's other things that we just haven't figured out or discovered yet. Like, I don't know how to seem natural. You guys are gonna see. You're gonna literally see the craters on the moon with your oh, own oh, eyes. Oh my goodness. With your own eyes, I'm telling you. <laughs> Who else's eyes? You're going to see the craze of the moon with your own. Oh, let me emphasize. These are not some eyes that we're going to implant in the side of your neck or eyes embedding in your forehead because it's like a new experiment that we've dreamed up with some of the powerful pharmaceutical companies and tech companies that actually control that government. Your own little eyes. In fact, let me pull them out of your head. I mean, this is a weird conversation to have. Check out this bit. The father of one of the kids, Carla, goes, this whole thing was pitched to my son as a pilot. He says that there's going to be other videos depending on the reaction and what the producers want to do. Our hope is they get picked up. Well, I don't see that happening. In fact, I hope that it isn't. I hope all these kids have wonderful, well, not careers, because I hope that their lives mean more. I hope they get to become who they really are. And more than seeing craters on the moon with their eyes, their own eyes, their own eyes, let me emphasize your own eyes, not someone else's eyes, not a mouse's eyes. They get to live in a fair, equal, representative society where their actions, thoughts, dreams and communication mean something. And it's not some zoetrope, some dumb game, some sort of veil, some Mayan device laying across the eyes to distract you from what's real. That's what I hope for for those children. That's what I hope for for my children. That's what I hope for for all of our children. More than going to space, let's live on this planet properly. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments below? Give us a thumbs up and a like. Subscribe to our channel. Go over to my Awakening channel, watch a little video on meditation and uh, subscribe to that side channel. Watch this video if you enjoyed this one and please subscribe to my mailing list as well. But most importantly of all, please stay free. Mm -hmm.